Hello everyone and welcome to this week's tutorial. First of all I would like to say sorry for the big gap in the last couple of weeks. First there was like my Easter break and then after that I sort of got caught up with some other stuff so yeah but I'm back and today we are going to learn how I made this wax effect in Houdini using a flip solver and I guess without further ado let's jump into Houdini and get started with this okay so here we are inside Houdini and first of all what I did was I created my logo using a trace and after that I clipped it in half because quadri Mesher wouldn't want to to properly mesh it the, uh, any other way so yeah and for you people who don't have access to quadri Mesher I make sure to, to stash this so you don't have like any errors inside inside your your hip when you're opening the file after remeshing it I, I mirrored it then I extruded it, add some bevel to it, and then I moved it downwards and rotated it, rotated it by 90 degrees. Okay. And then here I converted to a VDB, which I also, if we wait for this to load, I made sure to give it enough exterior pan voxels, you'll see why in a bit. Okay, so this is like with the model, this is like what I did for, in terms of like model preparation. You can use any model for this technique, but it would be, it would work the best with the model that's like low profile, like this one, and not that, that tall or three-dimensional so to speak okay and yeah this is like the the model preparation here I just have like a really flat sphere which I use the mountain to really mess with and then I'm, I'm having a flip source here which is linked to the to top network Okay, now inside the dot network, I set it back to zero for the first like 50 frames or so there's nothing happening other than emission for the first 20 frames and then I'm letting that that emission go. Oh, I'm in the wrong direction. No, that's better. Okay, and I'm just letting that emission go for like 50 frames and create like this puddle of, of melted wax that's also sort of dripping in this direction. Okay, and in order to achieve that, I did add some initial velocity to it. And I also am having a force that's pushing it in like that direction which after frame 51 I'm changing to another force that's also pushing it in that direction but at a much slower pace so this is that okay now here I haven't changed much other than uh, of course uh, decreasing the particle separation so I have enough resolution to work with uh, I'm adding a viscosity attribute and then I'm making sure to set that viscosity attribute here. I also change the visualization to particles because the default is sprites and it looks like this and it's not that workable for me. Okay, uh, I also added a ground plane and in terms of like the solver settings I'm running this at 0.5 time scale with with like the default sub steps. I am not using any receding 
I am using particle separation and I'm using this in order to make sure that the meshing is gonna be smoother and easier to to smooth and be less prone to like flickering and other behaviors like that and I'm also adding an ID attribute to the particle just in case I need it later okay now here again because of like wanting to have this look really really smooth and flowy and not that crazy and also to to like avoid again uh, flickery behaviors and stuff like that so i have a much easier time meshing this i've switched this from the default flip to to epic i did enable viscosity with all the ticks here with the viscosity attribute and adaptivity and i also increased the scale of of the viscosity to 100 because if you remember we only set it here to one we could have also set it to 100 here but when i was setting this up i i found it easier to to modify everything here in the solver and I'm also, I've also enabled surface tension and left the default of 10 here because it worked just fine for, for our needs. And this is like how the basic fluid is like. So yeah, for the first 50 frames, there's nothing like crazy here. Just, just like a viscous volume that flowing in that direction uh, now from the frame 50 on there's like these two pop angles that start that start uh, acting up and what they are basically they are manipulating the force attribute which is an attribute that the, the solver recognizes and knows what what to use it for is basically the force attribute is like all the forces that the, the solver uh, has added into it, added together. So it's like one final vector that can be used to like uh, create a velocity field and then use that to add vector particles. So uh, yeah, we can manipulate that for to, to suit our need. And what I'm doing here is I am I have set up the second input to be the second context geometry of the dotnet which you can see here is linked to that VDB we created earlier with with the like the enough exterior band voxels and What I'm doing is I'm sampling that VDB first time in this float. I'm taking the actual SDF value of the VDB. And then here I'm computing the gradient for that same, that same VDB SDF volume. So if you remember from like our, from our, uh, ice melting tutorial and also I think from like the uh, metal formation tutorial uh, what a SDF is is a volume that basically always stores the distance that that voxels, voxel is from the surface of the object it represents so if it's negative it means we are inside the object and if it's positive it means we are outside the object and it's just like the distance from that voxel to the closest point on the surface and the gradient is an analysis process that can be done to that SDF which in practical terms looks like a normal it's sort of it's a vector that's going to point you in the direction of the surface. So if we multiply these two together and we negate the gradient, because you can see here I have a minus, what we get 
is basically a force that's going to always push towards the surface of the object represented by that SDF. If I'm hoping I'm making sense with all of this. And I have here basically two forces made with, with like the same principle. This one does nothing to the inside because if you, you can see here that if the SDF is smaller than zero, meaning it's negative, the SDF is going to be zero, meaning the force is not going to do anything. And also if the SDF is greater than one, this force is also not going to do anything. And the purpose of this force is to sort of keep particles inside the shape. And then I'm also having a much you can see here that I have animated this, so it starts from frame 50 to, to X, and it's like a really powerful force, it, I animated it from 0 to like 3000 I think. And I'm also having here a much like a smaller intensity force, which is just acting sort of globally, and what, uh, what this is doing, I actually I have commented the earlier to test something but they were on for, for like the simulation so here again if we are inside the surface or really close to, to the surface we make sure that this force doesn't act because we want we don't want the force to push the particles outside the shape once they they got inside we only want them to we only want it to push the particles inside the shape so yeah basically this force is not limited to like out around the the volume and is acting throughout it and this is why we had that uh, exterior band voxel set so high so we have a volume like here uh, after the bound of of like the fluid puddle so we have a force here that emits and what this force does in practice is it pushes this this puddle that that remains here here on top it pushes it it drags it and pushes it inside inside the the volume shape so uh, yeah this is it in terms of simulation if we look at the particles it looks something like this Okay, and you can see that there is some like fluid left behind and this is because uh, this force that drags that drags the fluid inside is so weak that it, it can't like compete with like the gravity and the friction and the viscosity that's that's going on there. Okay, and here I just cached the, the particles. Here I have like uh, time shifted it so we don't have like the initial part when we have the fluid emitted and we only have a bit of the flowing and then after that the logo starts starts forming. Uh, I did retime this by 0 0.25 so this is like 4 times lower and this is the reason why we why we enabled the ID the ID inside the particle behavior in the solver. Okay, and in case we have any like unmatched points when it interpolates, I just want them to be deleted. Here I added the clip, which looking back I am not sure was like the best idea because I think it contributed to that flickery like behavior that was happening here inside 
inside the hole in the logo so yeah I might remove this and do a mesh one more time you can also experiment with this or just simply remove it because if your logo doesn't have any sort of holes in it I guess it doesn't make any sense to have it there anyways okay after that I have just a, a default particle fluid surface which again has its particle separation linked that's like good clean practice to have to have all the particle separations linked together so if you change it in one place it it propagates across across your setup i decreased the voxel scale a bit so i have like more resolution to work with i decreased the influence scale so like the shape is sharper and has more more definition to it is not like that blobby and i also uh, smoothed this by quite a bit because if i didn't it would look something like this but i might have over smoothed it a bit maybe this would have kept some some more detail and maybe made it more waxy so yeah this is again one thing you you might want to experiment with if you're doing this setup yeah and after that i just cached it and and rendered it using octane the octane setup was just an hdr as usually i I'm really lazy and I have a minute camera animated by an owl so here once again is the result So yeah, this was it. I really hoped you, you you enjoyed it, and I really hoped you learned something new today. And once again, thank you so much to everyone supporting me here on YouTube, and also really special thanks to everyone supporting me on Patreon. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next tutorial. And bye bye.